neurodegenerative disorder. A neurodegenerative disorder are disorders where a certain group of brain cells start dying and gradually reduce in number over a period of time. Due to the neurodegeneration or the loss of cells, what happens is you get the symptoms and signs of Parkinson's disease as the number of cells producing dopamine reduce in number. We don't know exactly what causes Parkinson's disease, but what we do know is that there is a, a gradual decline in the number of cells in the substantia nigra, or, which is a part of the brain. The, what we found on the pathological slides is that there is Lewy body formation due to a deposition of a protein called alpha synuclein. This protein is not thrown out from the cell, it's actually garbage to the cell which is not being thrown out and eventually accumulation over time kills the cells because of which the cells die. But what causes this protein to accumulate is a question of a lot of debate and which we don't have a clear answer to. There is some genetic components which we know do exist which cause Parkinson's disease. But there are also environmental factors, including pesticide exposures, which have been considered in some of the causative factors of Parkinson's disease. But the exact cause of Parkinson's still eludes most scientists. So Parkinson's disease as it's traditionally known, is known by four cardinal motor symptoms. Motor means movement. The commonest one that most people in the public would know is a tremor. The classic tremor of Parkinson's disease occurs when you're sitting in a chair, relaxed, maybe watching a movie, and your hands start shaking. For example, like this. The other symptom would be slowness of movement. And you can typically see patients with Parkinson's disease have a slower walk as compared to others. You can also see the slowness of movement in a change in handwriting and the handwriting can become slower and smaller. The third cardinal symptom would be rigidity or stiffness and you can notice stiffness in one or two parts of the body including the shoulder and sometimes you can get just a frozen shoulder presenting as Parkinson's disease. And the last motor symptom as far as Parkinson's disease would be postural instability or in more simplistic language, loss of balance, in which patients can tend to fall, tend to lose their balance and, per and always feel that they are imbalanced when walking. The mistake most people make or, the, or the, the lack of knowledge is that most people believe that this is all that is Parkinson's disease, a motor disease. But as more and more science is advancing and more and more research is being done, we realize that Parkinson's disease is far, got a far wider scope than just movement related symptoms or motor symptoms. There is a host of other symptoms called non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And these symptoms sometimes can predate, that means occur multiple months or years before the onset of the motor symptoms. I'll separate the non-motor symptoms into various categories. So one of the commonest non-motor symptoms is depression and anxiety. There are many people with Parkinson's who will have depression for many years prior to the onset of Parkinson's disease. Sometimes the depression can come only when the medication effect is not working or in their what we call as motor off state and other times the depression can be all the time. And many times initially they have just gone to a, to a psychiatrist for depression before realizing that it's the on onset of Parkinson's disease. The next non-motor symptom would be memory symptoms. Memory symptoms usually do not occur at the beginning of Parkinson's disease to that extent, but over a period of time, over many years of Parkinson's disease, we do know that at least 30% of the people will end up with some degree of what we call as cognitive decline. Cognitive decline indicates not just memory, but indicates a host of other symptoms that make us different from the animal community. The 
process of thinking, the process of planning, judgment, execution of complex tasks, calculations, all of which may at some point get affected in Parkinson's disease. The other very common group of symptoms in Parkinson's disease is called autonomic symptoms or symptoms pertaining to the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic symptoms include constipation, urinary complaints, sweating, and these of which constipation is a very, very common symptom, especially in the Indian population. Many of these symptoms, like constipation, can have occurred for many, many years, even prior to the onset of Parkinson's disease. Another symptom in the autonomic group is drop in blood pressure when standing and it usually manifests as dizziness or a feeling of faintness when people stand up. This may, all these symptoms may or may not occur in a person with Parkinson's disease but the important thing is to realize that these symptoms exist so that if they exist you can tell your doctor so that appropriate remedial action can occur. The next group of non-motor symptoms would be sleep related symptoms. So patients can have uh, difficulty sleeping or if they fall asleep they might be woken up in between and can't go back to sleep and the last symptom could be a symptom which we describe as REM sleep behavior disorder or RBD. This is a symptom in which a person can start shouting in his sleep, talking in his sleep or enacting a dream in his sleep and can be moving his hands in sleep, punching the partner all as part of a dream. And, and it can be even present for almost 10-15 years prior to the onset of Parkinson's disease. So we treat the symptoms of Parkinson's disease using various drugs. Most of the drug strategies available today are strategies to either increase the amount of dopamine in the brain or to provide the raw material for dopamine in the brain. So basically these are dopaminergic agents that improve the amount of dopamine in the brain. And what, what we do is depending on the age of the patient and the profile of the patient, we start the patient on either a dopamine agonist or sometimes other drugs like a MAOB inhibitor or in some cases we directly go ahead and give the drug called L-DOPA which is the precursor to dopamine in the brain. We have to tailor the dose so that we are able to control the symptoms with the dose. Sometimes we have to give more number of doses so that we can keep the person without symptoms throughout the day. It's a tailor-made solution and hence it is very important from time to time once you start a treatment also to keep having regular checkups with the doctor so that the dose is tailored to keep you symptom free or with the least symptoms present throughout the day. Apart from medical therapy, I think we cannot overemphasize the importance of physical exercise and other forms of physical therapy. And in that respect, the Parkinson Society has tried every modality and has been using every modality at the support centers, including physical therapy, yoga, speech therapy for those who have speaking difficulties. This would be a dream come true for any scientist. Unfortunately, there is no cure for Parkinson's disease. We are not able to stop the process of neurodegeneration. There have been multiple trials of various drugs, including coenzyme Q, including vitamin E, including drugs like selegiline, rasagiline. But most trials have failed to find an effective drug to prevent the progression of Parkinson's disease. The closest trial that came to finding something what we call as a neuroprotective agent or something that protects from Parkinson's disease was rosagiline. But even there, the data of the trial completed in 2009 is inadequate to give a, a reasonable answer as to whether it's useful or not to prevent the progression of Parkinson's disease.